with the Bitcoin happening less than three weeks away, we are seeing, of course, tons of FUD. Is the happening actually priced in? Welcome back, everyone. Let's dive into it. Let's dive into it. So, look, uh, as most of you know, this is my uh, my third my third happening uh, event. And yes, I call it that. I've called it that from the beginning. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. But I've had this discussion with many people having, having, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Either way, the point is, is that the block reward, right, which is what goes to the miners every 10 minutes gets cut in half. As of right now, every 10 minutes, 6.25 new Bitcoin enter the current supply. And in about two and a half weeks, it's going to go down to 3.125. Okay, so everybody knows that. Now, the reason why I'm explaining all of this is because in both of the previous cycles, okay, especially the first one, the first one, the first one is the one I really got trapped in. Because as soon as I heard this, and I didn't understand what this was about, I got nervous. And I thought, all of a sudden, uh-oh, something bad's going to happen to my Bitcoin. You know, like all of a sudden, it's, you know, that's it, it's over. Because I didn't really understand it. And essentially, um, last cycle, last cycle again, okay, we saw the same type of FUD. Approximately about a month, two months before uh, the halving takes place, well, you start to see articles that say, hey, this is already priced in. We're going down. Now, you may think to yourself, why would somebody do that? But you don't realize that there are people, right? This goes back to the whole everybody's a scammer thing, okay? So Bitcoin hodlers, right? I'm a Bitcoin hodler, like, they're scammers too. We're scammers too. Why are we scammers? Because obviously you want to get as much Bitcoin as you can, as cheaply as you can. So the reality is, is that if you're going to sit there, you know, and try to get as much Bitcoin as you can, putting out uh, a fluff piece that causes FUD and may get some weak hands to sell at a lower price, that might be something that you're looking for. Anyways, I'm just trying to give everybody a different perspective. Obviously. I'm not trying to FUD the market, you know, or anything like that. I don't really give a shit about doing that because I just, I, I find it disingenuous. I, to me, like, it's like, look, you know, if you want to accumulate Bitcoin, you, you don't have to go and scam other people. You know, you just got to sit there, do your work, save your money. And then, hey, I'd like, I want to accumulate Bitcoin, you know, like you don't, you don't have to be a scammer, but yeah, I kind of have a hard time reconciling that with the whole everyone's a scammer thing because yes, indeed, none of us are better than our incentives. Okay, anyways, I've gone on long enough with this. Let's dive into it. Are, are we just being fudded? So the Bitcoin having priced in already, Coinbase analysts announced, oh, that's right, it's over, guys. It's already priced in. There's nowhere to go but down. While the halving is expected to be an important catalyst on the BTC price, a new report came from Coinbase. Keep in mind, Coinbase's incentives are to get you to trade, right? They make all of their money or the majority of their money, uh, besides creating bullshit projects uh, that people buy the vaporware tokens with, they make the majority of their money from trading fees. So getting you to sell your Bitcoin <laughs> kind of works out for them. Just saying. All right. So speaking to the block. Coinbase analysts said that the Bitcoin halving may have already been priced into the market. Yep, there it is. Everybody missed their chance. Coinbase analysts David Dong and David Han stated that the BTC halving may have been priced into the rally in March. And, and, and of course, that could be very believable because we've never seen an all-time high prior to the halving event. Anyways, so the latest rally may be the first halving cycle in which Bitcoin breaks its all-time high before the halving. This could mean that the halving effect is already priced in by experienced investors. So first of all, Bitcoin's not an investment. It's a savings vehicle, number one. Number two, okay, it, it's not maybe the first halving cycle. It is the first halving cycle that has had an all-time high reached and broken prior to the happening. So people say, you know, that, that whole meme, this time it's different when it's really all the same. In this particular case, this time it does seem a little different. Of course, I'm always cautious, but 
the entire picture is not the exact same as previous having cycles. Anyways, apart from the Coinbase analysts, U holder senior official Sergey Gorev, I've never heard of the U holder exchange. This is the first time. But guess what? He also thinks that the having may already be priced in. And guess what? He also, right? He's the senior senior official of a exchange, which makes their money from fees of getting you to trade. <laughs> so again, a little bit more fudding, right? If I own an exchange and I tell you that Bitcoin's topped out for the cycle, what do you what, what what's your little hamster brain gonna do, right? What are our little hamster brains gonna do? I need to go and find a different a different crypto that I can go and trade and make more money on. <laughs> Anyways, that's just my take, my basic take on that. But yeah, I I'm sorry, I don't see any incentive for these people to tell you that it's not priced in yet. Okay, I don't see any incentive for these people to simply say, hang on to your Bitcoin. I do see a lot of incentive, though, for them to tell you to trade your Bitcoin. Gorev stated that Bitcoin's recent price decline may indicate that investors are making profits in anticipation of increased volatility before or after the upcoming halving event. Okay, so I mean, look, um, that that whole terminology, right? Taking profits. So taking profits, we especially as Bitcoiners, we, we just, I guess, we just don't see it the same way because fiat is the melting ice cube, right? As Michael Saylor alludes to, and as we know, the money is being printed infinitely. So this idea of taking profits into fiat, it's kind of a gray area because for me, I'd rather hold, uh, I'd rather hold Bitcoin as the majority of my holdings than have fiat. Right. Because the reality is, is that I am exposed. I want to be in my eyes. Anyways, again, this is just me. I want to be exposed to, quote unquote, Bitcoin's volatility. OK, <laughs> for me, like volatility is a good thing for, for these people who think that volatility isn't. How do you think stock markets work? You know, like the volatility is opportunity. OK, that that is what it is. But anyways, the point is, is that there will always be people buying and always people selling. OK, the the thing that happens, though, when enough FUD pieces like this come out is that you can essentially FUD yourself out of your own Bitcoin position just because you may get convinced by some of these people who truly don't know any better than you and me. And I'm not saying I know better than them either. I'm just trying to put us all on, on a level playing field. OK, um, nobody knows any better. They, they really don't. But what I can tell you from previous cycles, in each cycle, the happening was never actually priced in. Guys, that's our clip for today. I'm going to catch you all next week.